Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Penny. I am a master esthetician in Portland, Oregon, and I'm excited that you're here with me today, you guys, because we're gonna do the Friday Q&A. This is the video that I'm doing every single week where I try to take as many of your comments and your questions and address them in one video. Today, I'm gonna focus mostly on questions from my Wednesday video on sagging skin, where we went over kind of a protocol and components to a tightening skin regimen. And if you haven't watched that video, you might wanna, I'll put it in the cards right here, check that one out and then maybe come back here because I think that there are a lot of questions that are very, very similar and hopefully I'll be able to answer, you know, a majority of your questions in this video. So we are gonna get right into it. I do have my phone. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to look down and I am sitting in front of my computer, you guys, because I have some studies that I wanna read to you and that kind of stuff or, or some summaries, that kind of thing. But the first question, Question is from DLA Princess, and this is a question that I got in varying forms quite a bit. So hopefully this will address it for those of you with this concern. And this says, hi Penny, love your videos. Thank you, I appreciate that. My question is with red light therapy and melasma. I've read that green light is helpful with hyperpigmentation and red light, red LED light can exacerbate hyperpigmentation. Can you give your thoughts on this? Yes, I can. Now, here's the deal. Unfortunately, it is not an absolute straightforward answer. What you need to know is that red and near infrared LED absolutely can exacerbate melasma. But on the flip side, there are studies, and in my case, that show that it also can help melasma. Melasma, unfortunately, is not a straightforward skin condition. Doctors will tell you that have studied it and studied it and studied it, that it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one to treat. It is kind of elusive when it comes to um, how to correct it, it wants to come back, all of that kind of stuff. What I can tell you is that melasma is often triggered by heat. And one of the ways that I think that people end up with a flare of melasma when they're using LED is because they put this mask on their face and there's no airflow. So it literally feels very warm. And near infrared LED does produce some very gentle heat. So you combine the fact that that LED is producing a little bit of heat and that that mask is right on your face and the heat can actually cause your melasma to look worse now that's one thing now I have never had any kind of flare of melasma with LED, quite the opposite. I always feel like when I'm very committed to my LED routine, which is five to seven days a week, that my skin just looks better and better and better. I get a glow and I definitely feel like my pigment evens out quite a bit. So it is very, very subjective per person. Now I do wanna put up on the screen right now a study that I think is very interesting. It's only with six people. There are limited studies, you guys, that are huge. This one is with six people, but it is from the American, it's published in the American Journal of Dermatology and Venerology. It, basically, they um, used LED on these people with skin Fitzpatrick level six. And they're testing to see their reaction basically um, with aging and some markers for aging and then also with pigment issues. And the findings were very interesting. The results were... The analysis of photographs taken at the baseline and after completion of the LED treatment presented both positive and negative findings. In five out of the six participants, we noted a significant improvement in skin tone, refined skin texture, less fine lines and wrinkles, and an improvement of the nasolabial folds and a noticeable evening out of the skin. On the other hand, one of the six participants displayed much darker melasma than before, suggesting that the pigmentation had worsened. So, okay, you can see, I mean, they used Vizia complexion analysis. I mean, this was a legit study and you can see five out of the six had improvement and one person had significant worsening of their melasma. That's the animal that we're dealing with with melasma. So there is no straightforward answer for me to tell you. It, it really is dependent on you and your own skin. Some suggestions. First of all, green LED is definitely wonderful for melasma. If that is your primary skin concern and you're not yet worried about aging, if melasma is your primary concern, then I would suggest to you to do green LED therapy and leave out the near infrared and red LED therapy. Green LED does affect the melanin. It is a um, melanin suppressor. Now, 
That said, I encourage you that if you haven't purchased an LED mask, that perhaps getting a professional LED treatment first and kind of seeing how your skin reacts before you invest in one of these expensive at-home masks that maybe you won't be able to use if your skin reacts poorly. So I wish I had a more straightforward answer, but it's definitely subjective. Okay, I got this question from Anne. Uh, w E six. And she says, what do you think of led on the neck area? Is it safe? Um, and she said, I want to buy a mask, but I've been holding off due to this concern. And it absolutely is fantastic for the neck. I mean, the skin on our neck is just like the skin on our face and we lose elasticity in our neck quickly. Partially we get this, um, degradation of the skin on our neck because we have less sebaceous glands there. And so we are less hydrated. So the skin just beyond, uh, elastin and collagen and that kind of stuff, the neck just dries out and we show signs of age there for sure. Not to mention that for many years of our life, lots of us don't bother with our neck until we really need to or until we really realize that we needed to. And so there's a lot of catch up that has to happen with our neck. And so definitely LED is fantastic for the neck and I highly suggest it. Now I did have someone mention to me, could they use an LED mask that is meant for the face and then just hold it over their neck? And absolutely 100% yes, you could. Obviously there is you know time involved there, but there's absolutely nothing to say that you couldn't take that mask and just, hold it over your neck for sure. 100%. Okay. I get this question all the time. You guys, this is from PK and it says when using led, should you use it with actives or humectants or on bare skin? And I always say, use it on bare skin, even a serum, even a serum that is clear might cause there to be an obstacle between the light and your skin. I like the skin to absolutely have nothing on it. Now in office, there definitely are products that get put on the skin, then LED is applied, and that's a whole different situation. But at home, I always say freshly cleansed, bare skin, no nothing on there. Just give that light its best opportunity to penetrate and do its simple, gentle job. Okay. So this one is from Claudia Guerrero and Miss Claudia says, hi, Penn, me again. Hi, Claudia. She says, I was wondering if you could talk about how to incorporate copper into a routine with prescription retinol, maybe how to include all of these things into a routine, what to do at night, what to do in the morning and that kind of thing. Okay, guys, I'm going to put this up on the screen right now. I actually did up a little, um, kind of, um, what do you call it? A protocol. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so this is a sample skincare schedule for copper peptides, vitamin C, squalane, hydroxy acids, and LED. So these are all the things that we talked about in that video. Now, you can alternate your nights with copper peptides and your vitamin A. So what you're gonna do is you're going to cleanse your skin just like you always do, whether or not that is a double or just a single cleanse. You're gonna wait 15 minutes for your skin to dry. I suggest that all the time for any of these actives so that you mitigate the irritation. Now, during that time, your 15 or 20 minutes, that's the perfect time to do your LED. You can do LED every single day, but for best results, you want to at least do LED five times a week. So you can skip some nights here and there, but just try to get in at least five times a week and you absolutely can do it seven nights a week if you want to. Now you do not have to do this at night. You can do it in the morning. I just like this time for it because it's when I'm waiting for my skin to dry anyway. So you're going to alternate copper peptides and vitamin A. You are going to cleanse your skin. You're going to let your skin dry, hopefully do an led session. And then 20 minutes later, you're going to apply either your copper peptides or your vitamin A copper peptides, especially the GHK dash CU. We're going to talk about this a little bit more. The original copper tripeptide is, uh, doesn't play well with retinol or a, a vitamin A. So we definitely want to alter those nights. Now, then you can go on with whatever else that you are using your pigment inhibitors and those kind of things that are not acids that are not alpha hydroxy acids or anything like that. And you will finish with a squalane containing 
moisturizer. That's how you would do your nighttime of the protocol that I talked about on Wednesday. Okay, now in the mornings, two or three times a week, you are going to, if you wash your face, you're gonna wash your face. If you don't wash your face, that's fine too. Some people prefer to just splash their face with water. Two to three times a week, you're gonna use your alpha hydroxy acid, and you're gonna put that on your clean skin. Now you're gonna follow it up with any of the serums that you love, your beta-glucan, your pigment inhibitors, your hyaluronic acid, any of those things on over your alpha hydroxy acids. Now, on the opposite days of the week, you're gonna use your vitamin C just the same. Cleanse or don't cleanse, however you like to do it in the morning, and then you're gonna use your vitamin C. Now. After your vitamin C, same thing. You can go on with any of the other things that you like, your beta-glucan, your pigment inhibitors, your hyaluronic acid, any of that stuff. Sometimes I will tell you that I find hyaluronic acid and vitamin C can gum up. So test that out before you use it on a day when you might be in a hurry because occasionally those two ingredients for some reason will really ball up. What you finish up with is your moisturizer that has squalane in it and your sunscreen. And then you put your makeup on if you wear makeup. So that is how I would incorporate and that is how I would do all of the things that I talked about in that Wednesday video. So I am gonna put up on the screen the next slide, if you will, is about copper peptides. Now, there is a generation one and two. Generation one was the first kind of discovery, and that was GHK-CU. That is what we see quite often now, you guys, and it's in a lot of these um, different serums and whatnot, and it was created for anti-aging, and it is more fragile than the second generation of copper peptides, which are called SRCP. SRCP are skin remodeling copper peptides. Now the GHK-CU, the ones that you're gonna see quite often in all of these serums, they're fragile. They cannot be applied at the same time as Retin-A. They cannot be at, applied at the same time as your hydroxy acids and they cannot be applied at the same time as your vitamin C. So usually what you wanna do is at night, and then the other is in the morning or you alternate nights. That's why in that protocol, I have you alternating nights with your vitamin A and your copper peptides, and I have your hydroxy acids and your vitamin Cs in the morning. So you can see how I kept all of those ingredients separate from copper peptides. Um, the GHK dash CU is good for sensitive and dry skin, and it is still considered the best version for anti-aging. Now, the SRCPs, the skin remodeling copper peptides, those are really good for working on scars, deep, deep lines. Um, they can actually help to remodel skin tags, that kind of stuff. They're great for post um, chemical peels and that kind of thing. Now, they are more potent than the GHK-CUs. They're more resistant to breaking down. They have a better adherence to the skin and they heal wounds even more quickly. Now, you, um, the cool thing about these second generation copper peptides is that they actually work on non-damaged skin as well. So they can go in and remodel healthy skin and make it even better. And you still don't want to use these SRCPs with vitamin C. It still just doesn't work with vitamin C. You still wanna keep it separate. And these are best, like I said, for scar revision and skin tags and that kind of stuff. Now I am working on compiling a list and I will get it to you guys as soon as I possibly can of suggestions of the different types of copper peptides. So your GHK-CUs and your SRCPs so that you guys will have kind of a resource for whichever type that you need, depending on what you need. Now, Dr. Picard has his own line and those are the ones that I'm after. And if I can, in this video, I will definitely link to him so that maybe you can read further and you can check out his actual, his products because they're gonna be the ones that are obviously the most effective, the most pure and, you know, do what he says. In, in these two types of copper peptides. What you need to know is there's a first generation and a second generation. One is better for anti-aging and more gentle, and the other one is more about scar revision and remodeling of the skin and skin tags and that kind of stuff, but it is 
more stable. So the other thing that you definitely need to know, and it was in many, many questions, is that no, you cannot mix copper peptides with so many different things. So definitely want to keep that in, um, in the back of your mind as well when you're incorporating them into your skincare routine. Okay. I got this question from Julie Smith. Hi, Julie. She says, hi, Pen. I want to know, is squalene okay for oily skin? And want to know if I use it before a moisturizer or after or serums. Okay. So first of all, it's important to know that squalene is a product of squalene and squalene is actually heavier. So I would definitely say that people with um, oily skin types would not ever use squalene. So squalene is lighter and it really just depends on the formulation. So if you get like a gel cream um, formulation that contains squalene, it definitely can be suited for people with oily skin. Um, it also can be in products that are formulated for dry skin. So the ingredient alone isn't necessarily necessarily good or bad for oily skin. It depends on the formulation that it's in. Now, squalane oil purely, I don't know that I would put that on oily skin unless you were incredibly dehydrated and you had dehydrated oily skin, then I would probably think about incorporating the squalane oil at night. And the way that I would use it is it would be one of the final steps. Anytime that you're using an occlusive oil, usually I like to put that down over everything else to kind of lock it in. And sometimes the only thing that would go on after that would be a heavy, thick moisturizer, but not for oily skin. I really don't think that that's appropriate for oily skin. If you had super, super dry skin, that would be a great thing to do is to, you know, use a squalane oil at the end of your skincare regimen and then follow it up with an occlusive moisturizer. That could be really great for a barrier, but um, I would stick with gel cream formulations, that kind of thing that contains squalane for oily skin types. Okay. This question is from Angela Wold and she says, hi, Penny. My question is how many times per week should we use our led light and how much time should we use it okay so once again you want to use it at least five times a week in order to get any results i mean it is one of those things it's like a trickle charger you guys it's coming in slow so you have to use it repeatedly especially these at-home devices they are definitely weaker than in office devices of course and so the way that they actually give us any benefit is by consistently using them otherwise if you're Sporadic, you're not going to get any results whatsoever. Now, like I also said, you can use it every single day. And I would say 20 to 30 minutes. You can, if you can only fit in 10 minutes of led every single night, that is good. That is a good, you know, treatment regimen, the consistency, that kind of thing. But if you can, if you can, I would say try 20 to 30 minutes at night or, or every day anyway. And uh, that would be a good, um, kind of a good dose of led. Okay guys, those are all the questions for today. If you have any other questions, especially regarding LED or copper peptides, leave them in the comment section. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you will have the best weekend. I am headed off to meet my friend Abby and we're going to uh, go on a little, I don't know, a little fun adventure this afternoon. So I hope you guys have a fantastic Friday and I will talk to you again in my next skincare video. Take care.